feel free to contact me because I would love to help you with your game. And I really hope you enjoy this video. Hello, this is Johnny Henson, Professor Poole with Bill University out of Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, first of all, I would really like to say thank you all for liking and subscribing because uh, you're really, really motivating me to do more of these videos. So I really appreciate that. Uh, today, I'm going to take you through uh, how to shoot uh, long kick shots with your cue ball. And to make it, uh, to make, kind of make it make a little bit more sense before we end up getting into shooting shots, if you can notice, you know, there's going to be a ball in, 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 in the pocket. There's going to be one about a half diamond up. And then there's going to be another one about a full diamond up. The reason you want to practice these rail first shots is because not every time you're kicking, a, a, kicking your cue ball, especially the long way, you, you're not always going to have the ball hanging in the pocket. You know, when it's hanging in the pocket, it's pretty easy. And, and one thing I want to stress, if at all possible, is to try to go rail first. Not only does rail first, especially if the ball's hanging in the pocket, take the scratch out of play, but it also uh, gives you a higher margin of error. So uh, when you're practicing these, just do your best, if you can, to try to go rail first. Now the one that's a a diamond up on the table, you're, uh, uh, whether you hit the ball perfect or whether you uh, hit the ball rail first, you're still going to make the ball and you're not going to scratch. So anyway, but when you're practicing these, just get in the habit of shooting rail first and that way you're eliminating the scratch and that way you're going to have total confidence when you're shooting these in actual game situations. So anyway, uh, let's get started with the lesson. Uh, to start with, uh, I'm going to show you a couple of things that you shouldn't do, okay? Uh, on this first shot, I'm going to pretty much go straight at the one. If you notice, I didn't go rail first, and I should have scratched, but I didn't. Okay, on this one is another common flaw that people do, you know, where they hit the ball first without the rail. And your margin of error for both of those shots are actually uh, not as good as going rail first. Now, on this shot... Uh, the one's always going to be in the pocket. The two is going to be a half a diamond out of the pocket. And the three, which is what I'm shooting now, is one full diamond outside the pocket. And the reason that you really want to shoot these in different spots is because it's going to make you fine-tune your aim uh, off of this first rail. Okay. Now, one thing that I am demonstrating in this uh, video is my scientific stroke. I teach the scientific stroke in my level one course. So all students come out mastering the, the uh, scientific stroke when they uh, get through level one. It is a very, very good stroke. It's uh, very relaxing. It's very accurate. And I feel it's very easy to master. And so uh, if you notice, I take a, a smooth backstroke. I have a distinct pause and then I just go straight forward with the shot. Okay, so this is one diamond out. I went rail first and I left myself the eight ball. Okay, now we're gonna do maybe one more shot just like that. Okay, okay, I hit rail first, made the three, left myself the eight ball. So that's what you wanna do when you're practicing this is keep yourself in a game situation or a scenario and to where you have a blocker, and not only are you trying to make the ball, but you're trying to come out for the eight ball. You see how I had to come away from the rail to get shot on the eight ball. So you want to set up some actual game scenarios when you're practicing this, and that may dictate that you have to hit a little harder than you normally want to. And when you hit a little harder, that means you know it's going to shorten your angle off the first rail, so you're going to have to over-aim just a little bit to make up for that. So as a rule, you want to mimic the same speed, but by setting up different game scenarios, it may force you to, um, to um, you know, uh, change your speed on, on certain shots, and you're going to have to know how to allow for that, you know. But anyway, um, I'm sure that if you set up this drill and you practice this drill uh, within a uh, reasonable period of time, you should be getting pretty deadly with uh, one rail long kicks. 
and that's going to really, really, really help you uh, uh, shoot your way out of a lot of the scenarios, either in leagues or, or tournaments. And uh, anyway, I sure hope that uh, you'll add this to your arsenal. I really want to thank all of you for watching this video. And uh, one thing I would really like to say is to really keep your speed consistent. Not only your speed when you're, when you're uh, uh, practicing, but try to mimic that same speed when you're competing. Uh, sometimes in the heat of battle, uh, then we tend to hit a little harder than we normally do in practice, and that's gonna cause your, your ball to, to come off different. And so if you uh, practice a certain speed in, in, in practice, then try to mimic that same speed in competition. It's gonna help you make a whole lot more balls when it really counts, okay? I really wanna thank all of you for liking and subscribing my channel because it's really keeping me motivated. And if any of you are ever in the Phoenix area and you would like for me to be your instructor, then just contact me. And I would love to put every one of you through my level one course. And uh, keep shooting and good luck to you.